Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are going to look at the Tier 8 Dutch cruiser, the Harlem. Now, the Harlem didn't exist. <laughs> because the Dutch uh, really just managed to get the uh, the Seven Provincians slash uh, De Reuter slash Eendracht slash, uh, slash Kekdoin, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> whatever they were called at some point, cruisers, but which were light cruisers, going before the Germans invaded them and put a very abrupt end to this thing. But uh, what is interesting and uh, the is that there are certain hints in history towards uh, where this kind of idea could come from. So the Dutch had a bit of a problem in World War II. And their main problem was that they had sort of a second home because they had been controlling parts of Southeast Asia, especially around the islands in Indonesia, for a, for a very, very long time. And, uh, the, and the obvious problem that they had was the Japanese who were threatening these possessions. Now, the Dutch were assuming at the time that the that the Japanese would send most of their really heavy forces like battleships and carriers and everything uh, to be busy with the British and the Americans. So they would only have to pro to deal with the Japanese heavy cruiser. Now the problem that the Dutch had was that the Japanese heavy cruisers were better. <laughs> they were bigger, had bigger guns, more, more heavily armed, and they didn't feel like that their relatively aging destroyer and light cruiser lines could necessarily keep up even the new cruisers that were being built in order to replace the old ones, uh, were still just light cruisers. So they wanted something that could deal with heavy cruisers. In effect, they wanted something that could deal with... Um, they, wanted, they wanted something that could outgun a heavy cruiser and run away from everything that it couldn't outgun. And that is traditionally called a battle cruiser. Well, the problem that the Dutch had was uh, they didn't know how to build one because they hadn't built anything like that size for quite a while. So their first designs were a little bit on the sketchy side and they were looking for assistance from the Germans by all, me, by all people and the Italians. And uh, that battlecruiser project had some relatively interesting uh, back and forth but never really came into fruition because the Germans were eventually invading them. So why am I mentioning all this? Well, because the Harlem um, has... Uh, in the, if we look at the description, and this is this is actually a, a, a little a little aspect of sadness, it says that uh, she was armed with German 203 mm guns. So these are effectively the Hippers guns, the standard 203 mm German heavy cruiser guns, and 120 mm dual purpose artillery. So manufactured in Sweden, so Bofors things. Bofors things always nice, means lots of AA. Uh, but obviously, it, you you'd be you'd be tempted to think that she had secondaries. And you'd be wrong, because she doesn't. <laughs> so, while it says in the description they are nowhere to be found, they are purely for the AA role. But uh, given that the ship has technically the Admiral Hipper's guns, let's, um, let's have a quick look at how they compare in general. Um, why do we have the shorts here? We do not want the shorts, we want the Harlem. There we go. So, if we compare the Harlem to the Admiral Hipper, obviously the Harlem gets gets there, gets her special ship skills. She does get the Air Defense Alert 2, which doubles your AA on both, and, and she actually has large caliber AA this time around, so that's good. And she obviously gets the airstrike skill. But other than that, um, she's not quite as heavily armored as the as the Hipper. Uh, they are, um, I would say the Hipper has the slight edge in, in maneuverability here. And uh, while these guns are the same guns on paper, they are very, very different in practice. Uh, as you can see, they have a worse armor piercing. They have a better high explosive damage, and they do two percent more fi have a two percent higher fire chance. Now, uh, penetration wise, uh, these even though the the AP damage is lower, they are still very very good guns, and they feel very similar penetration and handling wise to the two hundred three millimeter uh, uh, C thirty fours that you have on the Admiral Hippa, but they do have a higher fire chance. She obviously doesn't get any torpedoes, and uh, the AA, while uh, she now gets finally, and that's where the 120mm Bofors dual things come in, uh, she does actually get a large caliber AA, which um, can be quite 
quite, she can be quite nice. So she definitely has some power here. And she gets two airstrikes with a 40 second base reload. So now we get two groups of um, of, air, of bombers, two groups of six, and each, each bomber drops six care packages, which individually don't do an awful lot, but uh, it all adds up. Now, obviously they are uh, they are airstrikes, so they don't all drop it in the same spot. They drop it over an area that you uh, designate. So not all of these are going to hit the target. But the 8.7 kilometer range is a slight improvement over the previous one. Uh, why am I having the Charles Martel here? Well, because uh, these guns, and this, these guns are interesting in such that um, they feel similar, even though they are actually German guns, they feel somewhat similar to the French guns both in terms of the fire chance and coincidentally having the exact same armor piercing damage. The French still have a bit more AG damage on these, um, but it feels like the Harlem has a slightly better penetration, but I have no data for this. This is just my, my general impression. Now, one ship we, don't, we haven't looked at here, and that is obviously the premium tier eight, the Seven Provincian. So let's compare the tech tree tier eight to the premium. The premium gets the engine boost, gets all the defensive AA and uh, gets a radar. Obviously, the Seven Provincian is a light cruiser, but this is the this is the post-war refit, I believe. So that's probably why she's been up tiered. Has better maneuverability. Uh, the guns. It's not about the guns really, but it's all about the AA power because the Seven Provincian has an absolutely ridiculous AA. Uh, seriously, it, it has an it has a ludicrous a, a amount of AA firepower, and she obviously gets three airstrikes with an almost ten kilometer range. That is the big big difference. Uh, and she's a light cruiser, so she's more maneuverable, she's faster, she's easier to get into position. The problem that you're going to start facing with the Harlem here is that you have to pay, to play uh, at a range of round about eight and a little kilometers, which. Uh, and this is where we need to where we need to look at the ship slightly visually. And this is the Harlem. This is the Admiral Hipper. That thing is even bigger than the Hipper. Compare that to the Seven Provincian here that we're seeing. That's a tiny ship in comparison. This ship is relatively chunky. So uh, you are obviously a relatively easy target. And if you have to play an eight kilometer range from battleships at tier eight, things can get rather interesting. So once again, the challenge here uh, to, should you choose to accept the mission, is uh, to position yourself in such a way that uh, you can you can get your airstrikes into range in order to actually do something with them, uh, and that means in range of things that can't easily just dodge them by turning a little bit, because you still have the problem of it actually taking almost ten seconds for the airstrike to get on target. And you know, if a destroyer sails ten seconds in a in a straight line, he deserves what's coming for him. So. Uh, usually wasted on these things, but you want to drop it on big things that don't turn a lot, so like battleships, which obviously means that you have to be close enough to do so, which means that you need to get yourself into positions where they cannot just delete you outright from the game. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, so let's have a look at the ship skills. You can actually set this up for, um, for speed and acceleration, which is an interesting uh, setup, and uh, if you want to play in open water, might be useful. I personally still prefer to just go with the gun layout here and get the reload time and down and the traverse up because the reload on the guns is a bit on the long side. You're still at 11 seconds and you only have nine guns to work with. Um, you are once again having the premium, uh, well not premium, the Dutch uh, special airstrike modification for faster reload on the airstrike, which if you're planning to you know, play play the ship again, similar as you would have played the previous ships. Uh, uh, positional around islands, then uh, I find that this is a good uh, this is a good choice. But the guns are actually really really fun to play uh, with as well. Uh, I am still using the propulsion mod and the steering gear mod. Although if you were so, for example, you could say that you're just going to play um, you, you're going to play air, uh, air support. Uh, long-range air support. You're just going to forego your dive bomb, uh, your your airstrikes, for the early game until the late game, or you just try to use it against destroyers or something. In in that case, you want you would probably want something more of the of the air defense build. Uh, but um, 
Personally, I like to play cruisers as all-rounders because, yes, once again, you still have the ship skill of uh, having a sonar. So you can still uh, deal with destroyers, even though not as effectively because you're a heavy cruiser, not a light, not a light cruiser. Um, Camo-wise, uh, there is a unique camo. Uh, there's the, the historical camo, which obviously makes sense because, uh, with the large L caliber AA now because you actually have large caliber AA. So... Uh, that is something you could use, or there is the uh, actually not completely terribly looking for a change <laughs> alternate um, camo, which is sort of this uh, Netherlands Navy celebration camo, which uh, features for obvious reasons a large amount of orange. And this will give you uh, airstrike bomber HP, which in my opinion is absolutely wasted because I can't see how these things will ever be getting shot down in the period of time that they're coming on target. Uh, I don't think it matters an awful lot because a you can't run you can't ever run out of them and b they're just have you just have a couple of seconds in which these come in and I generally see maybe one or two planes coming down out of maybe a strike of six so I don't think it makes an awful lot of sense I would probably just stick with the historical which which looks which looks suspicious suspiciously German in my opinion uh, even though the torpedo damage reduction isn't going to make an awful lot of difference either so. Eh, meh, meh, doesn't make it. It's, it's same, same, doesn't make a large amount of difference. But for now, we're going to just use the standard free camo that we've got. Uh, I do have the same commander here that I was using last time in the Eindracht. So uh, the same setup like last time. I am still using a battlefield support for additional uh, sonar and defensive AA because I do like using this ship in AA support if I can. And... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still not using the recon because I am trying to use uh, to to go for um, damage over time with the two strike two strike wings, and we do have the strike wings down at this point to a reload of 36.8 seconds, which is uh, still more than on the Seven Provincian. But uh, uh, one difference also is that uh, the Harlem's uh, bomber squadrons are having six per plane, so you've got a total of 36. Whereas here, um, you've got only four, which means you've got 24, but in return, you get a faster reload and more airstrikes. So this thing is still more powerful, especially from the range in terms of, uh, of the airstrikes. All right, so I think we've gone through all, through all the details. So let's get into some gameplay. The first battle is a 5v5. We've got um, Izumo, Double Amagi, a Kutuzov, and a Hipper on the enemy team. No destroyers. So that's good news. And the bot carrier is a bot carrier, so um, not an awful lot of da danger from these things. Uh, but it's an epicenter, and we don't have crew, uh, we don't have destroyers of our own either. So you you do need to kind of watch your positioning, like I mentioned in these cruisers, because they are pretty chunky and uh, it, they are taking a lot of damage from battleship shells. So my first port of call is going to be that island straight ahead, which allows me to be in either the outer or the middle ring. And then we'll just wait. Now, in terms of ammunition choice, uh, the AP is good, but it's not as good as the German AP in return. The HE is better, but it's not as good as the French HE so, or the Japanese. I, I'd say it's somewhere in the middle. So, uh, the AP does lose out, uh, does lose firepower quite a bit at long ranges, whereas the um, HE does... Uh, does relatively little in terms of penetration against battleships, but the, the fire chance is obviously what you're after, because you, if you're going to try and go for permafires and, and the likes. Now, we're going to let the bots go first and um, and go and die. So this is probably around about as far as I want to go here. I've got the island to shield me from any battleship fire coming in, and I can go bow in towards um, towards anything that comes out in that gap here. And I can, uh, I can assist with capture of the middle ring which is uh, is why I'm here. And it allows me to retreat if I need to, and I should have things in air, in, AA, in, in airstrike range. Well, just not yet, but uh, we do have an enemy hippo over there, but I think he's just out of, uh, out of range. And there is a battleship coming around the right flank. Um, yeah, it's one of the Izumos. Uh, actually, it's an Izumo and an Amagi, so we're getting flanked by these two, which... Um, I, I do have a Missouri with me, who seems to be... Yeah, you see the armor piercing does not do an awful lot, so might as well just not bother. Um, we do have a, a Missouri with me, so he's probably going to be um, 
going to be tanking. And since there's only one more battleship and he seems to be engaged on the other side, I am going to start... Is that Izumu advancing slightly? I don't know. I am going to start and um, and get uh, pl play a little bit more risky out in the open here. And uh, uh, this is probably as far as I want to go. Izumo is reversing, so second airstrike out on that thing. And there it comes. And you, you see the AA going off on the Izumo. But um, yeah, there's one plane shot down, I think. Uh, but uh, it's still we're still getting a decent amount of bombs on. And uh, he's damage controlled, so... Now our next airstrike, which is coming back in six seconds, has a chance to set another fire. Now I'm obviously reversing because the while they are both uh, focusing on the Missouri, um, now where is he going? Is he going to? He's going to turn, right? He's not going to just beach there. Uh, no, he's just going to beach there. <laughs> okay, so that was uh, that. That's the game I mentioned earlier. Of um, okay, that's one perma fire at least. That's the game I mentioned of trying to guess where the ship's going. Um, there's two Parma fires, but that wasn't me, that was the carrier. And uh, just keeping an eye on the left to see if that battleship gets any funky ideas. But uh, we are so far holding all three capture circles, so there's not no need for me to do anything else. And yeah, that Izumo has just beached, so that airstrike has gone straight across him. He might be backing off slightly, but um, that's where we're going to drop it. And... Uh, that should be the end of that Izumo, to be honest. I don't think he's going to survive that much. And he did. Okay. So that leaves the Amagi, uh, which means we need to get into somewhere like 8, eight point odd kilometer range of the Amagi. Uh, once again, obviously, very big cruiser, uh, but still cruiser armor. You want to be, you want to be bow in, and uh, you do not want to give broadsides to something like the Amagi's guns. Need to get a little bit closer. There come some planes uh, that we can wipe, wipe out of the sky. But there comes our ow. There comes our airstrike ready again. So um, this is about as close as I want to get. And I'm still trying to. He seems to be burning. I'm not sure if he has yeah, double fire. I don't know if he's, he wants to damacon that. Airstrike comes in and now he damacon. So he's not an idiot. <laughs> he knows how to use his damage control wisely. Now I need to make a turn, which is going to hurt. Uh, yeah, that hurt. But um, uh, there's some, I can't hang around and play with this Amagi over here. And I should be able to... I'm switching over back over to the armor piercing because that Brandenburg that you see there is um, on low health and there's a Hipper coming his way. And there's another cruiser after him. So uh, while we are way ahead on points, uh, there's, uh, I, I, I do need to help out over here. So let's drop some planes in the direction of where that Hipper is going. I don't know if he's paying attention to that. And uh, then we're going to get ourselves into close range where we can actually do some damage against the Admiral Hipper. Obviously, I've got now the armor piercing loaded, planes dropped on him, and uh, Hipper, ha Hipper, has, uh, Hipper has torpedoes. That's why I'm running the, the sonar to see if he wants to torpedo drop my way. But I'm, I'm drawing his attention away from the Brandenburg. Oh, the Brandenburg's dead anyway, I think. Okay, there come the torpedoes. Uh, we are down to three, but uh, let's even that out. And we are at, so far ahead on points. But, uh, now there's the there's only the Kutyusov left. So uh, AP is the right choice here. I remember taking one torpedo from the from the carrier, but uh, uh, that Kutyusov is uh, a light cruiser, which means I am now obviously uh, in in a. Uh, while I am in relatively low health, I am in a, in a good position to deal some, to do something about that Kutuzov. The problem, obviously, with the Kutuzov is if he knows what he's doing and using armor piercing, uh, then uh, he can do a, a really reasonable amount of damage to me. So now comes the play, play around the islands uh, thing. Now at this range, armor piercing is going to do that to the Kutuzov exactly, because he is relatively light, uh, lightly armored. He's now on fire. He damage controls, and uh, there comes the next airstrike in. So. Let's see if we can uh, spunk him a little bit more, but we are losing obviously a lot of health. There comes the second airstrike. No fires. Okay, no perma fires, unfortunately. Uh, no, can't lob that around. Okay, we're gonna get get ourselves back into the rings, but uh, now we can play ring around the roses. Now, I did mention that um, the that the airstrike has a minimum distance. I, I think I mentioned it in the last video, honestly. As you can see, 3.6 kilometer minimum distance. I can't actually drop the Kutuzov from over here. But that's not an issue because um, he's just hammering my belt here at this point. And uh, while we can hurt, hurt each other, I've got the bigger guns and I can do that to him. So even though we, he started off on full health, I think he's now very dead. Because with that last shot, I should be able to kill him. And uh, that actually brings us to a thousand points already. So that's that done. 
All right, yeah, 84,000 points of damage is not terrible, I find, for a tier 8 cruiser. Um, positional play is everything, and um, pl playing wisely uh, and, and uh, having, having, the right, having the right overview of the, of the battlefield is, is pretty much what you want to do. And as you can see, the bomb damage on these, uh, even though the guns are per individually not massively great, but the bomb damage adds up over time quite significantly. And if you can get permafire set, that obviously helps as well. So let's do that again. In the second battle, uh, we are up against Lexington, Colora Colorado, Gneisenau, Shpaev, and Öland. And it's, an, it's a domination battle this time around. So obviously one thing that we can do is uh, AA support. On our own side, we do have a Xianyang and a Benson. So if any one of them needs some AA support in the capture circle, you can go along. Just don't blindly rush into enemy caps uh, because you don't have any torpedoes and you don't have the rate of fire to do something about destroyers very quickly. So you're not a light cruiser. <laughs> uh, we're, we're here with, with Xianyang, so uh, going to head towards A cup, and the carrier seems to be scouting towards A as well, so that's a good combination. We should be seeing what's coming, what's coming down around there. I'm just heading towards the island. Always try to stay near islands. Playing the ship out, out in the open is very, very risky because you are a chunky cruiser and uh, battleships love to take advantage of that. Now there are some planes coming and the Xianyang appears to be... Okay, so he's peeling off towards B Cup. So he doesn't want to be here, which means that uh, my mission has now changed from being aggressive around A Cup to holding A Cup. So uh, let's see if we can do some damage to the planes while they're circling around us here. Yeah, please circle your planes around more. I like that. Uh, okay, of course, fire immediately. Not gonna damage on that because there's a Shapayev opening up on us. So we're just gonna nose in. Um, we're, we're just going to nose in. What's that Lexington doing? <laughs> we're just going to nose in towards. Okay, double fire, and there's also Colorado coming. Uh, just nose in towards the capture circle, and then we're gonna get ourselves out again. But I do want to get in range of uh, dropping some. Oh, and Poland is here as well. Okay, so we've got. We've got three ships coming at us here. Let's get some shots out at the Öland. Uh, heavy cruiser rules do apply uh, with the armor choice. So at mid, mid to long range, AP is better against destroyers. At close range, HE, obviously. So you're going to over penetrate. I'm not sure what the Öland is shooting at over there. But um, we're dropping the Shapayev again. And we've got double fire on him. Uh, does that stick? No. So he, he Damacon, but I'm not going to start using the, uh, the HE. Uh, because it's, I, I've got the, the bomber wing already ready again, and the Shapayev hasn't learned his lesson yet that he shouldn't be sailing in a straight line. No one's trying to take the capture circle from me, so I have no reason to be that close to it. And um, I'm just obviously having to keep my nose in towards the Colorado as well. The Shapayev has given up on trying to... Oh, okay, no, 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 man, no fires from the bombers. Unfortunately, the Shapayev has given up on trying to set me on fire, because he has realized that I'm not a, a complete idiot, but now he's getting into close range, and that's when these guns... Can show their German pedigree <laughs> against the Shapaya. I'm not also. I'm now also getting shot at by the um, by the Colorado. So uh, I, it's it's about time. And there's an Öland around here. So it's about time to make myself scarce. Let, let's see where the Shapaya is going. Um, if he is going to to try and hide behind the island. Okay, he's given up shooting at me. Uh, but uh, there's Öland. So there are going to be torpedoes in the water. Uh, I've got, got the wrong ammunition loaded for the Öland at this range, and I, the Shapayev is actually coming around the corner, so now it gets interesting. Now I'm going to have to dodge both Shapi Torps and, um, and Öland Torps. There come the Öland Torps, there come the Shapayev Torps, so full ahead, and see if we can dodge at least one or two of them. That's the Shapayev dealt with, and that just leaves Öland and Colorado, so uh, I might be taking two because the ship is just so big. Yeah, two, but that's... Uh, Sustainable. Erland is behind. Uh, Colorado is over there. Colorado obviously being an issue. Um, now, I don't usually drop destroyers, but if I don't have anything else to drop, I might as well try. He is going backwards. So, um, we've got the HE loaded at this range, because otherwise he'll be over-penetrating. And I think he's starting to move forward, so probably that airstrike is... Well, we got one bomb on target, at least. You know, it, uh, everything adds up. But, uh, Erland might be reloaded by now, because these, these little buggers reload very quickly. So I'm opening up the distance. Uh, he, he is starting to chase me, um, and I'm not dropping. I'm not doing the airdrop because he he seems to be he seems to be uh, going behind the island there. So I don't know where exactly he goes. 
So I'm just keeping my distance, trying not to get blabbed uh, by the Colorado and just defending once again here. The carrier is helping out. The carrier has been playing well. Uh, it's been really, really supportive here. And uh, I've got the second airstrike up against the Öland because the Öland had to turn left, otherwise he'd be running into an island. And now he's sitting smacked up in the center of that airstrike, and that hurt. So um, I, I can now recover a little bit of um, a little bit of hit points, and the Öland's still trying to set me on fire. But I have a damage control ready, and that is a dead Öland, if ever I have seen one. So he dead. Uh, there might be torpedoes in the water, but I'm not 100% certain if he had them reloaded. And that just leaves the Colorado which was uh, sailing around somewhere over there. So uh, the enemy team was, was gracious to um, attack me piecemeal and let me deal with them one at a time, <laughs> which is always much appreciated if they do that. So now we just have to farm the Colorado back there. So we're going to get ourselves into airstrike range, but I, I, I'm out of heals. And we are in range, so we don't want to get any closer. I'll drop it ahead of the Colorado, and then we're going to try and set some fires. Obviously, I'm going to stay nose in here because, uh, well... The, you know, it's a Colorado, and I'm on 7,000 hit points. So he can one-shot me if he, need, if, if he manages to get the shots in. But um, he damage controls that, which means the Damacon's going to be on cooldown, I think, still, when that drop hits. Uh, yeah, I think that was a little too early. Should have waited a second more. But that's okay. We're just backing up. And the carrier is, like I said, again, helping. Well, I mean, at this point, there's nothing else for the carrier to do. But the uh, carrier is still helping. And I think he spotted the carrier. So uh, that's one perma fire. Let's see if we can add to it to his misery. Since he starts shooting at the carrier, I'm going to turn a little bit, give a bit more angle and get the rear turret on target. And obviously get another airstrike in. And he's going to risk that um, he, he keeps shooting at the carrier. And that's the airstrike. And that's a triple perma fire. And uh, now the Benson's coming for him as well. So I'm getting ready to switch to the armor piercing because obviously he can't set any more fires right now. Uh, but um, until they burn out. But I think that thing is going to be dead before anybody gets to it. It's just a question of does the does the destroyer get him or the carrier or do I get him? No, I get him <laughs> from my fires. So that's that. So I, I like this ship. It's um it's a fun ship to play. It's not an easy ship to play. And you do have to be very, very careful not to expose an awful lot of it because, well, <laughs> you do get shot down. But you you have options. So let's say if you're if you're if you're an island cover, if you're on low health and you're an island cover, you still have options. You still have things that you can do. You can still be really, really a nuisance with these airstrikes. And these bombers are hurting, especially if you don't waste them on destroyers, unless it's you know I've got nothing else to do, or you know they are they are a danger to you. Um, but uh, the guns are good. They can really shred cruisers at close range. The uh, the HE is good as well. And um, you just need to be careful to manage your hit points and your positioning. And then these can be actually quite fun ships to play. So we'll see how tier 9 and 10 are going to behave. I'm probably not going to be doing tier 9 until we have the full line out. Because I do want to see how she compares to the tier 10 and um, make sure I've got, you know, the right skills and everything for the progression, depending if the tier 10 gets anything different. But um, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.